Today I want to talk to you about the subject of attitude is everything. And I will say in life, attitude is everything, folks. And I want to give you the outline as we begin. Number one, Jesus had these three attitudes. Paul spoke and wrote of these three attitudes. Number one, an attitude of love. An attitude of love. I truly believe if you were the only person on earth, Jesus still would have died for you. Folks, that is love. Number two, an attitude of humility. In the world that we live in, we do not see much humility. It's all about me. It's all about me. And, and folks, we live in that me world, and that's why our world is so messed up. Is because we should be thinking of others, not ourselves. The third is an attitude of submission. Submission. Jesus Himself submitted to His Heavenly Father. And He is asking us, He implores us in Scripture to submit to the authority of our God and Savior. I would like to read from the Baptist faith message the Lord's Supper was instituted by Jesus Christ Himself. It points back to the Last Supper He shared with His disciples before crucifixion. Jesus explained that the bread was symbolic of His broken body for all believers. The juice represents His own blood which was shed for you and me. The Lord's Supper is a memorial service received by baptized Christians. It truly is a post-resurrection celebration and commemoration of the complete work of Jesus Christ. The Lord's Supper is an ordinance is, that is to be understood in symbolic terms. We know baptism is the other ordinance of the Baptist faith. It can be the highest expression and the holiest exercise of Christian worship. So my prayer today is, that you will see what Jesus did. His example that we need to follow. So let's look at attitude is everything. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Philippians 2, 1. Therefore, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love. Folks, I am telling you, God loved us. Jesus loved us loves us. There was, there was never a time when God hasn't loved you. Jesus has always been on your mind because they are one. If there's any fellowship of the Spirit, of the Spirit, and any affection and mercy, folks, you show people you love affection. And today you are showing God, your affection. You are showing Jesus how much you love Him by participating in the Lord's Supper. And folks, we live on mercy and grace. Mercy is not giving us what we deserve. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. He has given us mercy and grace. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded. And the word joy in this Scripture is used three times. And listen, what joy is, J is putting Jesus first. Jesus first in our lives. O is others second. Others second. And Y is yourself. And we get that confused sometimes. All right? Jesus is saying, this is how you find true joy in your life. You're not going to find joy in this world. Folks, we're just passing through. Joy is Jesus. Others is second, and yourself is last. Be, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Oh, folks, Jesus showed his love for us on the cross. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to read a portion of this scripture to you, talking about love. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. These are characteristics, folks, that we need to have. These, this is the love that we need to have for God. For God, for our family, for our fellow man. Love suffereth long. It means love is patient. Think of how patient 
God has been with you. Love is kind. Folks, it's not hard to be nice to people. Be kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. True love. You are not rude to people you truly love. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. This is love. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, which is sin, but rejoices in truth. What truth are we speaking of? The truth of God's holy Word. Folks, we know how to act because we have God's love letter to us. It is God's love letter. Look at verse 7. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Folks, I am telling you in relationships, the most important thing is love. It is love. And also in that, behind love is trust. We trusted God at salvation. And we need to keep trusting Him through uh, all of our lives. And then verse 8. Love never fails. Folks, I am going to fail. I am not always going to be easy to love. I'm not always going to love everyone like I should. But God's love never fails. Look at John 13. John 13. With me. John 13. Verse 34, John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you. This is from the words and mouth of Jesus Himself. The new commandment I give you, that you love one another. What was the old commandment? What was the old ways? What was the worldly ways? If somebody doesn't love you, you don't have to love them. If somebody hurts you, you don't have to be nice to them. And Jesus is saying, That's the way it used to be. An eye for an eye. Get even. And now he's saying that is not the way it should be. A new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. Are you loving God the way He loves you? Are you loving Jesus the way He loves you? That you also love one another. By this we will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Folks, you can get through anything, anything with God. True love is loving Him unconditionally in the good times and in the bad times. Folks, we can can do it during the good times, but even when things aren't going our way, And I'm telling you, this love that he is speaking of is that love for God, that love for Jesus, that love for the Word of God, that love for your family, and and, and love for your neighbors. That is the attitude he wants us to have as his children. Attitude, folks, is important. Attitude is everything. Attitude shows up in our words. Attitude shows up in our actions. Attitude shows up in our face. And we need an attitude of love. The second thing I want you to see, not only an attitude of love, look in verse 3 back in our text, an attitude of humility. An attitude of humility. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Folks, it's everywhere in our world. It's the society that we live in. I got news for these folks that raise their hand and say they're number one. They are not. They are not. They think they are. But the Scripture that we will read at the end of the verse, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, Jesus is Lord. Folks, it's not about us. This, I don't even like someone to say, your church, this is, this is not my church. This is God's church. This is Jesus' church. He's the shepherd. He runs the deal. Not me. 
And we have this society where I have my rights. Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus could have come off that cross. He didn't have to do it. But He loved you so much that He humbled Himself. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but lowliness in mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. And folks, it is, it is just in, it, it's just not in our society. Okay? What do we want to be? First in line. What do we want? We want our checks first. We want everything first. And folks, true humility. And, peop, and, and I, I read this quote from Warren Wiersbe. True humility is not thinking less of ourselves. It's not thinking of ourselves at all. True humility. So it tells me there's a false humility. But we need true humility and lowliness in mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Oh, folks, there's a hurting world. There's a dying world. There's a world that needs Jesus Christ. There's a world that is saying, show me your God. Show me your God. Show me your love. Don't just tell me you love me. Show me that. And we need to have that attitude of humility in our life. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. Folks, I'm telling you, all of humility begins in your heart. In your heart. Because, folks, our mind sometimes can get off track. Sometimes our mind is not where it needs to be. I hope today you are focused today. I hope your, your mind is clued in here. And the, folks, the key is your heart. Is your heart clued in to God? Is your heart coming under the submission of God? Do you have that mind that Jesus had? And I am telling one of the things... And, and when I read this, every time I read it, I cannot get away from what Jesus did. He walks into a dinner with the disciples. And he looks around and notices nobody took care of all the guests that were there. So Jesus took his time and he took that place to teach them a lesson in humility. He took a towel and wrapped it around him. He took another towel with him. And as people entered that room and the disciples entered that room, he took a wash basin and he washed everyone's feet that came into that room. Oh folks, you talk about humility. Here is Jesus Christ. Here is the Son of God. Here is... A, is deity that is at the right hand of God. Here is Jesus showing them, folks, you haven't got it yet. What were they doing earlier? Arguing over who is going to be sitting beside him in the kingdom. Folks, that's the mindset that we have as human beings. And we need to have Jesus' mindset he took his hands, those hands that were going to be nailed to the cross. He took their feet and put them in that water basin and that dirt and that muck from how, where they walked everywhere. He washed every one of their feet. Listen, even Judas's feet. You talk about humility, folks. You talk about humility. I am telling you, we need to take Jesus's Example. Example. And it says, being in the form of God, folks, He was God in human flesh. He did not have to do that. But He did. Why did He do it? To show us how we 
should do and treat others. Folks, we don't always have to finish first. We don't always have to be first in line. We don't always have to think we are above, and we should not think we are above anyone. Anyone. 1 Peter 5. Go with me to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Likewise, younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And look at this, and be clothed with humility. Humility. If it's the last of something, folks, if it's the last of something, the argument should be, no, you take it. No, you take it. I, I don't need it. I don't want it. You take it. I want you to have that. And that's just opposite of what society and the world is teaching us. But God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You want God's grace? You have to give grace. You have to be humble, humble in what you think and do and act. Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Humility is not having to be complimented. It's not having, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not getting your feelings hurt because somebody didn't say something to you. Humility is saying, listen, it's just between me and God. It's between me and God. Casting all your cares on Him for He cares for you. I am telling you, my friend, God cares for you. God loves you. God loves you. We need to come to the Lord's Supper table with love and humility. And the last thing I want you to see in Philippians is an attitude of submission. I'm telling you, verse 8, verse 8 just jumps out at me. Verse 8, And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Folks, even Jesus submitted to His heavenly Father. Even though they were equal. Even though, it, though it's the, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When He came down here to earth, think about the humility. Think about the cross. Think about them stripping Him of His clothes thinking about the thousands of people that were there. Even in the trial, he said not a word. He was humble. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. He was humble, even unto death. And folks, obedience equals submission. Let me ask you today, have you submitted to God? today? Have you committed, recommitted your life to God today? Have you come under the authority of God today? Have you said anywhere, anytime, any place, God, I am here. I am here for you. Even the death on the cross. Matthew 26. Go with me to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 38. And we know Jesus took some of the disciples to Gethsemane. And we know Gethsemane means pressed. Pressed. He went to pray. He went to pray many times. He went to pray. And He told them, sit here while I go and pray. The time when He needed the most. He needed the most. And, and another part, another section, another gospel said he found them asleep. Asleep and not praying. But look at verse 38. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed, oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me. Why would he say that? Was Jesus wanting to back out? No, he wasn't. But he was the God man. And he knew what he was about to go through, folks. 
He knew he was going to be beaten within an inch of his life. He knew he was going to have to try to carry his cross to Calvary. He knew that uh, there would be a sword in his side. He knew that he had to die a cruel death uh, with the crown of thorns on him and people spitting at him. Even in, on, in death, uh, you know, a, a thief you know, saying, if you are the Son of God. And then this word, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Folks, submission is simply saying, God, I come under your authority. God, I trust your plan. God, I want your will for my life. I'm not making decisions anymore. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what other people do. It doesn't matter what other people say. And folks, these are the attitudes that we need to have, not just on Lord's Supper days, but attitudes that we need to have in our lives. Folks, the Lord's Supper truly is a memorial service. It is a moral service. We should take it seriously. We should take it soberly. We should take it for what it really is. It is a reminder that Jesus' body was broken for us. That's what the bread, the bread is symbolic of the body. And Jesus' blood was shed for us. The juice is symbolic of, of the blood that was shed for you and me. And I do not feel like I would be doing the right thing by participating with the Lord's Supper without giving you a chance to come to God, come to God with an attitude of love, with an attitude of humility, and an attitude of submission. We will have a time of invitation, and I realize that you can get right with God right where you're at, and I pray that we all do that in our own way, but we're going to open the altars up and if you just want to come down and pray, just come down and pray and prepare your heart for the Lord's Supper. We want you to do that. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that the Holy Spirit is just telling you, do it now, do it today. If you need to rededicate your life, if you'd like us to pray with you, just come. If you want to follow the Lord in baptism, in baptism, you come. If you want to join the church today, you come. You come as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this day. God, thank you for your love. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the example of your, your, your humility. And God, I thank you for submission. God, I know we submitted to you at salvation but God, sometimes we do what we want to do. And God, I pray we not do that anymore. God, I pray we take a fresh look at our spiritual life. I pray we look a, a fresh look at the words that we say. I pray we look uh, uh, at our actions. And God, I pray that, and, and again, I know nobody's perfect. I understand that. But God, I pray that we would all have the right attitude when we take the Lord's Supper. God, this is your church. These are your people. This is serious stuff. Serious stuff. So God, I pray that we would just reflect on you. That we wouldn't look up, not even look up during the invitation time, but just draw a circle around ourselves. And God, I pray that we would do business with you this day. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?